Scout Headquarters, San Fernando. Okay, so Mike is our chief coordinator, but let me, let me, I'll, I'll give you those introductions, yeah? Well, I'm here as a participant in the most vibrant enterprise, I think, in Trinidad and Tobago. This is the Heliconia Foundation. Um, with me is, of course, the coordinator, our big man in charge of the Heliconia event today. This is Mike. What we have is a legal aid clinic. Um, these are Trinidad and Tobago's young professional class. This is the Heliconia. For those who may not understand, Heliconia is, of course, the official name of the Balize. Um, but this is an enterprise really born out of a resurgence of intelligentsia and professional commitment and uh, definitely societal engagement. I mean, the real credit in this room certainly stands behind me and just to the side of me. These are the young people of Trinidad and Tobago who are giving of themselves for country. Um, this has been an enterprise in the making and certainly has started quite some time ago. It's been very vibrant. There have been lots of seminars, lots of groupings, lots of reach out. It is perhaps more keenly contested than major political party events in a general election. I mean, the, the election for the Heliconia executive was certainly a very dynamic um, go out at the last minute and pull voters in event. I think I could safely say that they probably have a larger voter turnout than the entire COP put together um, for their internal election. Seriously, to give you an understanding of how vibrant and, con and, and seriously contested it is. So today we're in Embakadere. Embakadere is uh, a special community to the PNM. It is a mixed community. You have straddling many professionals. You have a squatting community. You have laborers. You have parents. It's a very mixed community, an old community in San Fernando. And the Heliconia Foundation has taken the decision that it is appropriate to give back. All of these young people in attendance today, the young professionals, are engaged in legal aid. Um, legal aid is, of course, perhaps the purest form of legal interaction that you can get. It is a very 
dangerous form of interaction one could see because you bear all of the liability without any of the reward. Um, and the reward, I mean, of course, there are no fees involved in this matter. It is a pro bono clinic for the good clinic. Um, there is going to be significant follow-on action required of the attorneys, but there's also a great deal of care and caution that has to be exercised in the process. So it's not a very easy event to manage because it isn't a one-day event. It's a continuation of work that is required by the professionals. And of course, this is something that you're dealing with people's lives. There are a range of issues that are coming through the door, from death, from estates, um, landlord and tenant issues, matrimonial issues, even though not ad advertised on the outside, have certainly been um, at the table. And what's going on is the receipt of information, and the identification of the task, the follow-on requirements that are necessary um, to really assist people who are in need of help. Um, Trinidad and Tobago has a legal aid um, operationality. It's a state-funded uh, venture. Um, attorneys certainly participate there. There will obviously be some need for coordination with that entity because sometimes people need to have the protection of a legal aid certificate um, as it relates to costs. Um, achieving legal aid and the pace at which legal aid works in Trinidad is certainly something that is a big issue in the country. Does it properly function? How do you deal with it? Law is a painful exercise. It involves um, dealing with issues in the past or prospective issues which are often very painful for the people dealing with it. The court experience is one that one should try to avoid, but it is sometimes necessary that you get there. When you get there, you want to be in and out and as efficient as you can be. So that's a bit of a d the general overview. Um, it, the Heliconia Foundation, and Michael will speak to you about it in a moment, um, has been engaged in work continuously. It happens that we're in an election year. Yes, it's true um, that there is an election year afoot, but San Fernando West, which is where I am dedicated in terms of my enterprise and I'm back, it is a very important part of San Fernando West for me. San Fernando West is going to be um, in need of continued effort and work. Um, we as a constituency have not had the benefit of certainly any form of visible representation for the last five years. Um, one can say that Trinidad and Tobago has in many senses forgotten San Fernando, whether it be San Fernando West, San Fernando East, Point of Pair, even down to Orup Orupuch. We have not seen development in our city. We are stymied. The plans for coordinating development in San Fernando, which Mr. Manning led the charge on, all fell flat. The interconnectivity of, of centralizing services, of reaching out to people and making this city run well, have all fallen flat. San Fernando is at risk if it continues in the current administration's care of being the forgotten city. Our businesses are under pressure. There's a serious underemployment and unemployment issue. There's a serious services delivery issue. The city corporation is starved for resources. It is understaffed. I mean, we saw police having to demonstrate and threaten um, industrial action. Not that they can, but working to rule on certain issues in a serious way because of central government's failure to provide the funding necessary. We have a terrible chick V situation. There was a lady sitting at, at the desk here today whose daughter died from chick V. Two years, nine months old. This isn't something that we're just talking about as the government makes it out to be, oh, a mosquito everywhere. We're talking life and death consequences as a result of the negligence of this government. So the legal aid clinic is really just a provision of services to deal with people's lives. I mean, we're talking life and death. We're talking about people living at the dump living off of and surviving in an area where leptospirosis is real. I mean, a child walking around with a cut infected can die 24 hours later. We are in a desperate situation in this country, in particular in San Fernando West, and we are being starved as a city corporation from necessary and immediate resources. We have a terrible vagrancy issue. We have a terrible understaffing of our hospital issue, we have transportation issues, we have flooding issues, and we need attention. So that's some of the coordinates between the current political situation, the need for representation, and then what we see from 
very capable, young, altruistic professionals who are willing to give up their time, their effort, their enterprise, their families to help people in Trinidad and Tobago. How you edit me is going to be quite interesting because it's a lot, but I really want you to hear from Mike and some of the young professionals because they are the real stars of today. These are the people that are giving themselves um, to service and we are very, very, very proud of them. And certainly, I think that this is more of what Trinidad and Tobago needs. So let me pass you on to Mike. Well, uh, good evening. Um, as, yes, as, as the Senator said, I am Michael Coppin. I am the president of the Heliconia Foundation. I am the titular head, but by all means, it would be remiss of me not to mention that this event is, in fact, being coordinated by the VP of Legal Affairs, uh, Ms. Marissa Bob. Um, Ms. Ms. And she being much better looking than everyone else, <laughs> we're happy to have her in the front. Right. Um, as the Senator would have said, um, or he, he, the Heliconia Foundation is, is, is aligned with the People's National Movement. Um, we pride ourselves as a young professional think tank dedicated to promoting and advancing the ideals and principles of the People's National Movement. One of these principles, as you may know, is the, is the need for, for social justice. And uh, in, in light of that, we try to ensure that our programs reflect that need. In fact, when asked, when we asked our members what they, they deemed to be most important, they said social justice, charitable works. So as a consequence, we, we decided to, 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 to continue the, the pro bono events, which was actually started in the interim executive last year. And Mr. Homer Saisai, he was, uh, was one of the leading stars in, 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 in this in initiative. And as a consequence, um, we decided to, to continue it. Um, we decided to make it a bit more organized this time around by engaging um, some assistance from, from senior attorneys. Um, so because what we realized is that ascertaining the needs and the objectives of the client is, is one thing, but there needed to be some sort of follow-up. So we're intending that having ascertained what those objectives are, we can then point them in, in, in the right direction. Uh, it's really important. Um, most of us work in a profession where it's, it's, it's all about pecuniary gain. You know, money is, it, money is, is everything, you know. Billable hours is, is what what's really matters. But that's not what, what, you know, that's not what law is about. Law is about equal rights and justice. And uh, we hope that we can ascertain what the, the, the common man on the ground, what the man on the ground, what his needs are, because it's, it's, it, it is reflective of, of larger societal aims, societal ills, I should say. And as a consequence, um, it, will, it will help to inform our policy going forward. So for instance, this morning, um, we had cases of medical negligence. Uh, we had cases of sexual harassment. Um, do that, do those issues dovetail with, with the need, for instance, employment rights and, and for, for reform of the healthcare system. So, uh, you know, what we do here informs policy going forward. So, you know, there's a lot of synergies as a consequence, it dovetails well with the, with the Heliconia's objective of being that young professional think tank dedicated to promoting the, the, and advancing the ideas of the People's National Movement. So that's okay. Uh, 11 now. 11 of us. <laughs> uh, we intend to really, the, the focus is to, 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 to provide to those, those facilities, those, those areas. Uh, that are impoverished, that, that would most need it. So we're thinking places like Miaro, um, where else? St. Joseph, um, perhaps even Tobago East. Move uh, yeah, Move um, uh, So those are the type of areas. We, we really want to base it based on need, right? Because, you know, pro bono is for those people with low income, people with, with who, who can't afford it, really don't need it. And we really don't intend to, to duplicate or go where it is not needed. Yeah. So that's really, that's what it is. And this is the first for the year? This is the first for the year, indeed. Well, we, we were, the Helicone Foundation was formed in 2000, but it was revived in 2013. It was relaunched at the Marriott Hotel, um, under Ms. Makeda and Twine, and um, it, it, we had an interim period for, for, for an entire year, and then elections were held last year in October 2014. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Great. The pro bono clinic this afternoon, well this morning into this afternoon for coming out. People, the attorneys that have volunteered their time, energy and effort this morning. As co of course, Saturday is usually a very hectic period for all professionals, 
far less for all Trinidadians because we use that opportunity to do our personal business. But I thank each member of the legal committee who has volunteered their services today for coming out and I hope to have their services for future events. We finish at 2 o'clock. We have a cutoff time of 2 o'clock. But of course, if there are persons that are still here in need of service, we will make arrangements to facilitate them. As at last count, we had about 50 people. Um, we Yes, 50. So we're hoping that we get a few more people. I understand there is a lineup outside waiting to get services. But, you know, all in all, we can count the event as a success. Thank you. You remember, of course, that this is a receiving basket. So what you have come through the door has to be followed up. There's work that is to be done. And as I tell you, I mean, this is really lives, at, lives in operation. It isn't a simple event. It isn't a casual occasion. It's, it's, um, it's much more than that. And really, I mean, you have everyone from councillors of corporations, aldermen, um, young professionals. Uh, I mean, really, the, the star factor inside of here uh, is the Heliconia Foundation and their enterprise and their dedication. And I think that this is exactly what our country needs. We need to have this replicated through society. This is where people really, young doctors, young lawyers, young accountants, young builders, young contractors, people who are willing to move their society forward by cooperation. I mean, we've had 50 people in quick succession only because there are 12 attorneys sitting it means that you can have efficient operation that way. Another 50 may come through the door. The fact is that many hands make light work. So, I mean, it really is the shared contribution of, of all present, and, and that's, you know, that inspires you that our country is still alive, well, and headed in the right direction. Okay? Thank you. I always find it interesting that we use the word defeated in the house. It's a pure numerical gain. The government has more members and the opposition has less. So I would prefer to focus on the fact of the no confidence motion that was debated. The result is irrelevant because it's a foregone conclusion that the government has more numerical strength in terms of votes against the motion than the opposition and the ILP would have had. I think it a very important discussion that the content of that motion was well put forward, that um, the issue of apparent bias and actual bias as discussed in the parliament um, was a very serious one to be had. Um, Mr. Mark, as the content of the debate went last night, was reflected upon in, in the history of Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark is not a short pants politician. He has been in this game for a very long time. And I think that the reflections in Parliament yesterday um, certainly have anchored into the society's mind. And I think that um, it really is a reflection of the need for, for change, whether it is on a, a larger scale basis of the currency of this election or in general the change of our country continuing to have a presiding officer who is a member of the government by choice. In many of the Commonwealth countries, the presiding officer of the parliament is a member of the opposition. And that's a very interesting thing to reflect upon. It is usual um, that the presiding officer is a member of the opposition. I say that now entirely um, without prejudice to the history of Trinidad and Tobago, the PNM, the UNC, whomever it may be, our system has been to appoint the presiding officer um, based upon the government that is in, in, in position. That's why motions of no confidence are allowed to be debated, and certainly it was robustly debated yesterday, and I think that it was well put forward. Yes, I do. I, I, I want to be fair, and I want to say that Mr. Mark gave birth to a lot of parliamentary reform, which the PNM had prepared. Speaker Sinanan, Barry Sinanan, is the man that drafted all of the parliamentary reforms that came in, the new standing orders, etc. These were allowed to, to come to life because we had an opposition that supported the government on the reform. 
This is the first time we've had an opposition that did that. If you go back to the Hansard record, you'll see it's the same Speaker Mark as Senator Mark that totally resisted the cut down in speaking time in Parliament. So really, it is foolish to say that it is the, this government that has um, given birth to reforms in the Parliament. It's been the Parliament that has done it. Because the opposition not only drafted the work, but actively supported the work. And Mr. Mark is to be given the credit. He's done a lot of very good work. But we're talking about a politician with serious standing, as Mr. Mark has, dealing with what he dealt with in Mr. Warner's motion against Mr. Hawaii. I mean, that's a serious matter, and I think that that was prosecuted and defended in the Parliament yesterday. The PNM's position is that Mr. Mark should do the honourable thing and resign. It gives me no pleasure to say that. I quite like Mr. Mark. I support and applaud the work that he has done in the Parliament. But unfortunately, the position that we've taken is based upon the event that transpired in the Parliament. And regrettably, we think that he ought to resign. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, good evening. I am Michael Coppin, president of the Heliconia Foundation for Young Professionals. The Heliconia Foundation for Young Professionals prides itself as a young, progressive think tank dedicated to promoting and advancing the ideals and principles of the People's National Movement. We aim specifically to advance the rights and welfare of young professionals, meaning those persons between the ages of 25 and 39 years old, who have a university degree, work experience, or those who don't have a university experience, uh, education, but who have a number of years working in a specific field. What do we do? One, we have a policy committee. That committee is actively engaged in key areas affecting young professionals. Those issues being employment rights, housing for young professionals, entrepreneurship, and a host of others. Two, we have a projects committee that is actively involved in charitable projects. The pro bono event which we are currently engaged in is currently under the projects it's one of those projects and is in fact it's, it's kind of difficult if you want to know more about the heliconia foundation for young professionals you can contact us at our email address at heliconia foundation at gmail.com if you want to become a member you can contact us at heliconia membership at gmail.com or alternatively you can call me at 714-7057 and you can get further information. Or you can simply visit us at www.heliconiafoundation.com where you can learn more about the organization. Thank you.